Welcome everyone, this is Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Pedology, and I was going to give a big long introduction to my guest, and unfortunately I forgot to uh, take him off the screen, so you see him, you see his name, he's one of the top 100 leaders as uh, set out by, I think it was Entrepreneur or Inc. Magazine, and he and I have been doing podcasts for ever, it seems, and it actually it's kind of... <laughs> And it's really kind of funny because I'll never forget, we had a mutual friend and he dragged me to this office in Burnaby, just outside of Vancouver, uh, to meet this fellow that I had never heard of. And he was so excited. He said, oh, we got to do a podcast with this guy, Scott. And of course, I was doing a podcast with this other individual. And we arrive, we sit down, we meet. And it's pretty obvious that what I was feeling was pretty much what Dove was feeling, like, what are these two guys doing? What is this thing called a podcast? Why would I even want to bother doing this? And boy, all I can think of is, is I'm really, really busy, and this is going to take up way too much time. And uh, somehow we convinced him that he should do this at, with us, and he did. And within three or four or five or six weeks, our fr mutual friend, I don't know, I think got bored and decided he didn't want to do anything. And so kept coming up with excuses not to show up. And so for years, I continued alone doing these podcasts. And to my shock, this year, we hit 300 episodes. And uh, and I was just thrilled. And so, uh, so welcome to the show, Dove. How are you doing today? I'm great, Scott. Thanks for inviting me. And yeah, I remember that very well. I remember you, you, and that your buddy coming in and trying to talk me into this podcast thing. And I'm like, dude, I do not need another job. You're like, no, no, no. It'll just take about 20 minutes. We'll sit and we'll chat. Like, okay, I can sit and chat for 20 minutes. And uh, that was, uh, the rest, as they say, is history because um, now I'm in my eighth year. Eight years, yeah. Eight and years, yeah. You know, so one it's of, been pretty amazing. Yeah, and one of the things that uh, – I often tell people about when it comes to podcasting is it's an amazing way to create relationships. And I think you and I are sort of the poster children for that and that we have a, mm -hmm. a really good friendship and we have a really good professional relationship that's come out of it. And uh, it, it really would never have occurred if it hadn't been for the fact that I, I think like in all relationships, you need to be present, right? So we were present with each other you know, every week, every Monday morning at, I think, 10 or 10.30 for yeah, yeah. years. And yeah. that's part of developing the relationship. And you can do it long distance, uh, as, you know, because the technology has changed so much. <clears throat> or you can do it in person. And, and either way is is fun and, and enjoyable. Although I have to say that <clears throat> getting together in person uh, is something I miss doing these days. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you and I used to get together every Monday, and it was great. <clears throat> but the show, my like for instance, my show has evolved enormously since then. It's changed names three times. Um, it became a radio show. Um, I do all of mine through Skype. I mean, I do occasional ones when I'm on site. If I'm in a different city, that I'll be in Dallas or in LA or New York or whatever, and I'll do it there. But um, a lot of the ones are done through Skype, and you're absolutely right. It has been a phenomenal relationship builder. Um, when I, It's fascinating to me that when I walk into a conference, people will say they know me who I have never met. I have no idea how they know me until I find out, oh, yeah, I listened to your podcast. Or, you know, they found out about me some other way. But that podcast piece is enormously valuable. And, you know, the fact that... You know, you actually taught me how to categorize myself inside of that. And so, you know, I have a pretty cool niche inside of that. And that's, you know, like I said, when you came to me originally about podcasting, I just didn't get it. And in truth, when you think about it, we were on the cutting edge. I mean, certainly you were before podcasting was even popular. And it's interesting that eight years ago, it picked up popularity for about a year and a half and then it dropped right off. And then it, in the last two years, since about 2015, uh, maybe 2014, it started to really ramp up. And now we've got a lot of people, more podcasts than ever, and it's hugely, hugely popular. And so much so, of course, as you know, uh, Google Play have picked it up, and they're running their own thing. So it's been a great venue for authority, for relationships, and for establishing yourself 
I highly recommend it. I actually spoke to people in New York about it when I was there just the other week and saying, I re- highly recommend that you start a podcast. And I actually did recommend that they speak to a certain dean of podology or pod- 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 something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. So one of the things that's occurred with me is, is I am now the chief foreign correspondent for Impact Magazine, and I'm going to be interviewing people that have made an impact. And you're somebody who's made a huge impact in my life, personally and professionally. And I know that you've also made an impact from seeing our mutual friends that we've accrued over the last eight years, a huge impact in tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people's lives around the world. And so Mm -hmm. You're, you talk an awful lot about leadership and, uh, and in particular leadership among mil- millennials, but I wanted to touch on a little bit. Uh, what I wanted to touch on today was leadership and making an impact. And our good mm-hmm. friend Ken MacArthur always says, uh, everyone makes an impact. The question is, how much of an impact do you want to make? And so how do you see leadership uh, impacting organizations and, and the people that are in those organizations? Thanks for asking. Um, the first thing is to understand that <clears throat> I will scale it back a little bit and say that whether you know it or not, you are a leader. Now, I know that many people watching this will say, well, I'm not a leader. I'm, I'm, you know, it's not my role. I don't really do that. Well, you know, you're talking about impact, but I would talk about influence. And what I mean by that is that each one of us has influence and you're sometimes influencing in a very positive way and sometimes in a less positive way, but there is influence. And once you become conscious of that, you're creating an impact. So the question becomes what kind of impact? So, you know, Ken McCarthy said, how much? I would say, no, no, not how much. Everybody's having impact, but what kind? Because, you know, the person who is a bully to somebody is having a great impact. Like there is a massive impact there. This person who is kind and compassionate to somebody is having great impact. The question is what quality of impact. So as leaders in organizations, as managers, as uh, as VPs, as C-suite, which are the people I deal with, CEO, CFO, et cetera, realizing that your very presence is having an impact requires you to take accountability for how you are And that's why we speak so much about authentic leadership. So understanding that being true to yourself rather than putting on the suit and the mask and becoming something, but rather being true to yourself and recognizing that your impact is direct, that there is a ripple effect of that impact, that when you impact that person who who you are guiding, who who is following you, you don't impact them, you impact everybody in their life as well. But there's a tweak to the personality or the tweak to the impact that in, in, has the way that they deal with their children or with their uh, friends and family slightly differently. So first and foremost is understanding the accountability and the responsibility of impact, influence, and leadership. Yeah, that's really, really an important point, Dove. And so when you look at the impact that you've had, is it something that you uh, planned on or how did you get to where you are now? <laughs> we don't have that long. <laughs> um, so, you know, as you know, my journey has been a, a long one. I've been speaking for 32, 33 years, a long time. Um, did I start out with the desire to impact leaders? <clears throat> no, it never even crossed my mind. That's something that's evolved over time. And it's evolved by exactly the piece I just talked about, which is by going in and looking at myself more and being self-investigatory and looking at what is the truth. You see, the question is, as I said, we're all having impact. So who do you want to serve with that impact? And that was the question that I've constantly had to ask myself because I want to be in service. I want my work to be in service of. So that's the question to ask yourself. And so for me, it's evolved over a long period of time. Um, and how it's uh, come about has been very different. You know, I think uh, there's a story I would like to share here. Is that okay? Sure. Because I think it's going to have, it's going to make my point. <clears throat> Many years ago, uh, I think it was probably about uh, 14 years ago, 12, 14 years ago, I was teaching a program 
uh, as you know, Scott, because you attended some of those, uh, one of those five-day programs that were long and intensive. And at the end, people are very gracious and they're very kind and they stand at the end and they thank me, which was awesome. Um, however, one of the things I've noticed about people is, particularly as I live in Canada, um, people are, uh, what's the right word? We'll just use it, nice. Um, which means which means that they'll say thank you because that's what they're supposed to do. And so you don't get away with that with me. So if you say thank you to me, my question is always, for what? I want you to be specific. Now, there's two reasons for that, not just for me, but because it allows you to take in what you've got. So this lady stands in front of me at the end of one of these programs, and I would want you to know this lady changed my speaking career. There are several people who've impacted me, and she changed my speaking career because she stood in front of me and she, you know, long line of people, and she waited and she stood there and she said, I want to thank you. And I said, That's great. For what? And she kind of stopped for a moment and took a moment and thought, and she said, I want to thank you for my grandchildren. I'm like, well, first of all, you don't look old enough to have any grandchildren. Second of all, I know there's no grandchildren here, so I don't understand. And she said, well, actually, my daughter's over there and she's pregnant. And she said, as a result of this program, as a result of what I've learned from you, this will change the, my relationship with my daughter. That, in turn, will change the relationship my daughter has with her new child coming, and she plans on having other children, and it will change the way I am interacting with those kids and hopefully the way they interact with me. And she said that to me, and i got to tell you, I got completely choked up, tears flooded out of my eyes, and, and I deeply thanked her, sincerely thanked her, and said, I want you to know how much I appreciate that. Because it was at that moment that I understood impact and influence in, a, in leadership in a way I'd never understood it before. That we stand on the stage, and I'm talking about speakers, or, you know, what, what, but it could be anybody. We stand on the stage of our lives, and we wait for the applause. We, we look into the eyes of the, of the person in front of us, and we want to see that you got it. But here's what I've learned after, as you said, hundreds of thousands of people around the world speaking and doing a platform. You know, speaking in front of a thousand people, for instance, and let's say 40 line up. Does that mean 960 didn't get anything? No. Some of them had things to do, they had places to go. Some of them were too shy. And many of them, this is what's important, many of them were so moved that they couldn't come up. And so what I began to learn from that lady was the impact that you have is not just on the people in front of you. It's the ripple effect of all the lives you will touch whose, life, whose lives they touched. And so what I say to you is this, that impact and the commitment to impact and the responsibility and accountability impact is the impact you will have on people who will never know your name. I don't know if that will lady's grandchildren will ever know my name. It doesn't matter. What matters is that I chose to have positive impact, and that is what impact is about. Absolutely. Well said, Dov. Thank you very much. Well, we've come to the end of our time together, and it seems like way, way too short. But, uh, Dov, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, maybe uh, take advantage of your knowledge and improving the leadership in their organizations, uh, or seeing how their leadership can have more impact in their organization, uh, how can they get in touch with you? Thanks for asking, Scott. If you want to find out more about me, uh, my main site is fullmontyleadership.com. Full Monty, like the, the movie, fullmontyleadership.com. You can find out about me there. You can find me, of course, on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook Leadership, uh, Dove Baron Leadership. You can find me, of course, on YouTube. You can find my podcast, as we spoke about in the beginning, on iTunes and also on Google Play. But the main site is fullmontyleadership.com. There you can find the podcast. You can find all the other things. And, of course, if you just simply want to follow me on Twitter, just go to at the Dove Baron, LinkedIn, Facebook, et cetera. Thanks for asking, Scott. Great being here. Appreciate it. And I thank you for the impact that you had on my life, Scott, by introducing me to podcasting because, you see, there's the answer. I want you to think about how many, literally millions of people have heard my podcast that you impacted. And those people, some of them, never heard your name. Thank you. 
All right. So before we sign off, Dove, I would I would like you to leave us with one leadership tip. Thank you. My simple leadership tip to you is this. It's the same thing I sign off every single podcast with, which is stay curious, my friends. Stay curious. The number one leadership skill is curiosity. The moment you stop being curious, you stop leading, you start assuming curiosity about the people in front of you, curiosity about how you can lead better, curiosity about the deeper purpose of your organization. Curiosity leads to compassion and it leads to courage. Be curious about yourself and how you can be a better leader. Be curious about those you lead so that you can lead better. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate you. Appreciate having you on the show. This is Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Pedology, signing off for the Impact Magazine. And we'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.